So in the grid, we can go here to the math category and can use the add module. And we can use a constant and the second constant and we can use a readout to see what's going on. So one plus one is two. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. No, just joking. Um, it's basic math operation. And we can also, yeah, two plus one is three. So it works kind of. And oscilloscope, uh, we can see how it looks like on the oscilloscope. The problem here is um, we're adding two and one, which is three and three is out of scope of the oscilloscope. Because the oscilloscope only uh, shows values between minus one and plus one. So we have to go here to 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3. And this is 0 0.6. And we can see the line here on the oscilloscope pretty clearly. So this is pretty boring and maybe a bit useless. But sometimes you need a math operation for exactly that. But you can also use this for audio signals or audio rate signals. And then it becomes more kind of interesting. So we use maybe here an oscilloscope uh, oscillator, a sign, maybe a pitch. Pitch, pitch over here. And we go to zero, which is C3. And maybe an attenuate here. And we go into this one here. So now I can see here the wave shape. Uh, maybe we go here to 50% or half the volume. And now when we change the constant, you can see we can offset the whole wave shape. It's not a loudness change, uh, so we don't change the volume. We we DC offset, or we offset basically the yeah the middle line of the oscillus, oscillator shape. Um, but when you have this at zero here, the um, wave shape perfectly oscillates around the zero line, and uh, this is maybe handy if you want to correct for DC offset or you want to introduce DC offset, which you probably don't want to. But it's possible. Um, interesting becomes more like when you also have an audio rate signal instead of a constant over here. So what we can do is we can duplicate here this oscillator to the second one. And maybe use this one here. Give this a different color. in here so so now we can see or maybe we add this and this together something like this um you can see the second oscillator which is green um is a bit out of phase uh, compared to the first one because we just duplicated this in some point in time, probably also in between some of the phase uh, options. And at the time when I instantiated here a new module, um, this one triggered out of phase. So we can we can bring this back into phase pretty easily by using a trigger a trigger module here and can re-trigger both oscillators at the same time. So when I push this button, these two oscill oscillator shapes will align perfectly. And you can also see that we add up in loudness because this oscillator and this oscillator is perfectly in phase. It's the same frequency and it's the same volume. Um, so we add up the same volume together. So we have twice the volume as before. So you can see here it line, lines up perfectly. Which means when this oscilloscope here is out of phase, exactly 180 degrees, we end up with a much, much quieter signal 
in fact we can cancel completely the signal out which is with, with each other so we have like a where we have a negative value here we add exactly the same amount in the plus range in the positive range and the same here when we have a positive value we add up the same positive value or subtract the same positive value um, to get a negative value so we cancel basically this with this one out so we end up with nothing and this is also something that happens when you have a bass drum in the same frequency as the kick drum uh, or bass in the same frequency as the kick drum and then you know you put these two together mix these two together and then you end up end up with nothing and lose a lot of energy and that's not what you want what you want is to what you want is to have these kind of in the same phase like this right so they add up and they increase in volume and then it's much much more punchier than before um so this is something you can do with the ad um um, the second thing is, or interesting is, when you bring this here out of phase and change the frequency even more. So the, the blue one here, is free, uh, the frequency is much, much higher than the first one. And you can see it uh, introduces here a lot of fluctuations. In fact, it changes the volume up and down and it sounds like a tremolo. So this is basically what you use when you create this kind of hover effect. So when I replace this here with a sawtooth instead of a sign, let's try this out. Right, you have these kind of effects, so also nice for bass. Um, but it also introduces loudness changes over time. So it's not a clear, full, static bass. It introduces some fluctuations, loudness fluctuations, and so on. Um, and that's why. Okay. So back to sign here. Back to the same frequency. Bring it to the same phase, phase alignment. Um, okay, so it's also twice the volume. I already explained this. Um, what you also can do is, um, of course, to exchange this plus for something else because the add operation is nothing else than just using a mixer. So mixing op um, oscillator one to operator or oscillator two the same effect and that's also why when you right click here on the mixer it shows you add at the replacement because it's kind of the same as you can see nothing really changes it's really the same you can also exchange it for a plant but now you can see the volume is again just in half or the same as each one of these oscillators. And the reason for that is that the blend module uh, compensates for the volume change for the right for when you add the signal together and they are uh, in the same phase, you end up with twice as loud signal and the blend compensates for that. And the reason is um, that you use a blend most of the times when you mix in a dry signal with an fx signal so reverb or something like this right and you don't want to change the volume at all just want to bring in another effect um so the blend is basically perfect for using it with effects right um then we have here um the sum which is also just an add, add process as you can see it's the same as add same effect the only difference with the sum module is that you can add more uh, sources here instead of just two with the add. Um, yeah, you could bring, bring in more sources, more oscillators if you want to and experiment with this. Let's see. Right, so now we have here three. 
oscillator shapes fighting with uh yeah against each other um so add this pretty simple process um also again if you use add it's the same or it's why we have here in the polysynth we have this mixing or blend oscillator blend mode panel where you have like mix and mix is nothing else than just add add oscillator one to oscillator two and you can mix between the two that's why it's called mix so we can mix one two or two both together and if you go to negative it's basically a subtraction mix is add plus and negative is subtraction um, so when you go back here to the grid and want to do the negative thing we go to subtract so we are using values and subtracting one signal from the other and now it's exactly the opposite around so when we go here to this and you can see here below when we bring these signals 180 degrees out of phase like this right it doesn't cancel it's not like that, that you end up with nothing instead you end up with the loudest signal okay so it's completely the other way around and when we have these both signals here in phase then we end up with nothing so you can use the subtraction module to compare two signals together so you take one signal and subtract it from the other signal and when you end up with nothing then both signals are the same and because of that we can re just remove here maybe the bottom oscillator and add these two are together and what you can do with the subtraction module now is if you leave the first input jack free and use the signal in the second input jack you end up with the phase inverted signal why because the first input jack is empty there's no signal going in which means zero and we subtract zero or we, sub we subtract our signal from zero so we end up with the phase inverted signal so you can see here the red one is the um, phase inversion and the blue or green one here is basically our dry signal so we can use the subtraction module with the first input jack free as an phase inversion tool or phase flip or polarity inversion tool so another interesting topic for um yeah the subtraction and add module is probably also the stereo field it's not really needed in the grid but it sh i'll show you anyway um so when you have like um stereo signal here it's just a regular drum loop and you take the left channel and subtract it from the right channel you end up with the side channel If you take the left channel and add it to the right channel, you end up with the mid signal. If you add up the side channel um, to the mid channel, you end up with the left channel. If you subtract you end up with the right channel but it's not really needed it's not really needed because we have here the stereo split where we get the left the right mid side um, output and we also have the merge you can bring everything back together if you want to so it's not really needed but it's maybe good that you know it or that you at least heard of it how this is um, how do we get the mid side informations or uh, the left or the right channel out of signals at the end of this video i want to tell you that most of the stuff i told you in this video is not really grid specific it's the same you do the same thing basically when you code a vst plugin or do something in max dsp or if you do it in reactor it's basically the same thing the only thing that changes is the syntax or maybe how the modules look like and what kind of features they have but besides that it's everywhere it's the same so 
in this video today we basically spoke more about signal processing than the grid and you are if you want to learn more you're probably better off with just reading a book of amazon about signal processing or go to this website here which is called dsbguide.com there are a lot of chapters in here about different um different audio signal topics and um yeah, it's interesting and you can apply a lot of that stuff also in the grid. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.